Okay, here's the update to get you guys caught up with what I've done on the nacelles. First thing you're going to notice is a lot of wires coming out of here and a big fiber optic. I'll get to the reason for those in a few minutes. But what I want to discuss is the exterior right now. Where I'm at, what I need to do next with it. Okay, so I'm going to do a zoom in. And we're going to discuss the seams. Right here is a bad seam line. The seam line exists from this point. Let me use this pen to point. From this point here, all the way up here, I have to remove all those seams. Because those seams do not exist in the photo reference photos I'm using. Okay? All along here, that seam is fine. All along here, that seam is fine. Okay, there's a plate that goes over this. And then right along here is the worst seam in the whole thing. You can see it in this video with this good zoom in. I am not looking forward to getting rid of that seam. And unfortunately, that seems real bad on the underside too. Keeping that detail with that seam is going to be hard. Again, there's a plate that goes here. The seam along here is fine. There is a big, huge plate that goes across there that I'm going to have to drill a hole in for all the optics. And then we get to along here, and I have the same problem from this point to this point, I have to do some seam filling. The back part's the worst of it. I mean, back here is entirely the worst of it, right along here that I have to get taken care of, and along here. And I'm still trying to figure out how to preserve that detail. One thought that comes to mind is to just get some heavy duty putty like Aves and just putty the whole thing out and then get some wire and run some wire across the top to re-add the contours. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this yet. I'll get it figured out when the time comes to it. I'm going to work on the putty up here in the front first okay now this bowl bend okay here's a close-up photo of it so you can see the detail paint okay that effect was done by painting some Tamiya clear red clear on the inside of this bowl and then I took some Tamiya flesh and swirled it in after the clear had set up for a bit. It was almost perfectly set up, but not quite. Okay. Now, here's a photo of it lit up. When it's lit up, it actually gives me the effect I want. I wanted more of an effect of what you see in the non-lit photo. But the lit up photo does come kind of close to what you see on the TV show. The only problem with that is um, it's, in sta it's in motion and I'm going to do some video of this thing lit up in motion in a few minutes, okay? Because there is some lighting to this, that's what all the wires are for. Speaking of lighting, let's start detailing the lighting, okay? I do have a spinner circuit for the lighting here around the bowl. Uh, the prototype spinner circuit I do have which is right here. So let me come in tight on this. Here's the prototype spinner circuit. I call it a prototype because I use an IC socket on it and you can see she's pretty tall with the IC socket. The IC socket caused some issues. This thing would not fit inside the warp nacelle in the IC socket. So I had to rewire it without the socket. Now, here's the wiring diagram for that. Okay, that wiring diagram is using a 4060 CMOS chip. The CMOS chip is a low power chip, consumes very little power. If you're powering your model with batteries, that would be the chip of choice. There's some problems with the CMOS chip though. It will only blink. 
you can't do a strobing effect where it blinks real fast and there's a long pause. Blinks real fast, long pause. I'm going to need that for some of the navigation lights, so I couldn't use the 4060 chip throughout. Um, the 4060 chip has multiple blink rates, and it's controlled by a timing capacitor and a timing resistor. Okay. Um, that is not really a big deal because it makes the chip, the circuit for this, very, very simple. You have the chip, you have the capacitor, you have the resistor. Now, some warnings about using the 4060 timing chip is this um, don't reverse the voltage. Reverse the voltage, you fry the circuit immediately. It does not like the voltage going backwards through it. The CMOS is very sensitive to static. So if you live in a very dry environment, you better take all the precautions you can for dealing with static. Because a small static discharge fries the chip. Okay? But other than that, I can get multiple different blink, blink rates out of that 4060 chip by just using different pinouts on it. Okay? Now, moving on from there, we're going to talk about how I light lit the warp engines. Okay? And again, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you it all lit up, showing you what it does. Here is a couple of photos of my work on lighting the warp nacelles. Okay, now, um, these photos show no insulation on the light rails, which is fine, because electricity has to have a path to follow. As long as no other circuits touch that, it is going to be all fine. It's going to be great. In fact, it does work fine. It does work great. You'll see that in a little bit, because I'll dim the lights, wire everything up, and show you all the different blink rates. Okay. Now, the 4060 chip regulates voltage, so I don't need a resistor to drop the voltage across the LED. I can just plug the 4060 into my power supply. The power supply for this thing is going to be 9 volts. Don't know why I picked that out. Maybe I wanted to use a battery. No, I'm going to use a wall wart. There's going to be too many LEDs in this. It'll suck a battery dry quick. But I could use a 9 volt battery to power this. Now, the navigation lights and the position lights. The navigation lights are the green and red blinky lights. The position lights are the white flashing lights. Both these are using a 555 timer chip. Now, the 555 timer um, does not regulate voltage. The voltage you put into the chip is the voltage that comes out of the chip. So, if I'm putting 9 volts in, I have to have a resistor on the output side on the LEDs, or the LEDs get fried. Okay? And I've already got that set up on both warp nacelles. And there's a few things you have to worry about with the 555 timer chips that you don't on the 4060. The 555 are what they call dirty chips. They allow their signal to leak into the power source. So if you don't block the single signal link leak, you end up with strange behavior out of any other circuits in the um, setup. Um, here's the circuit diagram for both the navigation and the strobe. 